Whoa. Kennecott Bingham Canyon Mine on the move. Okay, this is two O's. Awoo. Uh, Warning 616. Metaquiasin reminding you that we are all related. And all these mines are related. Kennecott, multinational operator, linked closely with Rio Tinto, also international mover and shaker, as it were. Okay, you've heard about the massive slide at the Kennecott's being a canyon mine in Salt Lake City. Uh, this is after its news. <laughs> okay. With a little background for you, as I love to do, as I want to do. This story is came out in the Salt Lake Trib and Deseret News oh, about a month ago. I don't see a dateline here. I'm working from www.kennecott.com. This is the original article that was then mirrored in local media. Okay, now pay attention here, as I know you will, because it's interesting when always interesting to backtrack. Kennecott Visitor Center will not reopen in 2013. You can, however, watch a one-minute video about how visiting the center helps give back to the community. Kennecott Mine is an enormous behemoth in the Winter Mountains to the east of, or excuse me, west of Salt Lake City, and in the right light it gleams like an enormous copper nugget. I always wanted to go see it, but probably it may come to Salt Lake City residents instead of them going to see it. At any rate, here's the background story. Updates regarding the visitor center closure will be provided as they become available. From more than a month ago, Kennecott's press release, due to slow movement of the northeast wall at Kennecott, Utah Copper's Bingham Canyon Mine over the winter, and I should tell you that there's lots of suburbs sort of directly underneath those mountains and nearby, so lots of people living in that region. So, okay, slow movement of the northeast wall at Kennecott, Utah Copper's Bingham Canyon Mine over the winter, Important to keep that in mind. The Visitor Center in Overlook Plaza will not reopen as scheduled on April 1. Plans are underway to provide an educational opportunity for Utahns and tourists in 2014. Slope movement is an infrequent, infrequent, but expected. That's really sort of a conundrum, isn't it? Infrequent, but expected. Hmm. Occurrence in mining operations and is carefully monitored. Kennecott has proactively addressed any potential safety issues by not opening the visitor center this year. We look forward to offering an experience that demonstrates the importance of mining and our commitment to the environment hmm. and community next year. Since 1992, the Visitor Center had generated $2.8 million for its charitable foundation, welcomed more than 3 million visitors, and provided a unique experience to learn more about mining and how it benefits our daily lives. It's a copper mine. Okay. Well, we're going to go to that in just a moment. It's kind of an interesting sidebar. All right, so this is already all across national news, at least. Massive landslide stops production at Bingham Canyon Mine. <clears throat> From yesterday, April 11th, by Mackenzie Romero and Andrew Adams, Deseret News. Deseret, not Deseret. There's a picture. Stunning. That's the bottom. I may be wrong, I understand this to be about two miles deep and has long been a major tourist and locals attraction. You can see facilities and parking lots here. A landslide at Kennecott, Utah Copper's Bingham Canyon Mine, which occurred Wednesday, April 10, is shown Thursday. By Ravel Call, Deseret News. There are 37 photos to see, 36 more. Come watch those. In the slideshow, it's quite dramatic and stunning. What started as movement measuring only fractions of an inch at Kennecott, Utah, Copper's Bingham Canyon Mine became the biggest slide Ted Heimbaugh had seen in his 36 years with the company. Now, going back, remember that there had been movement throughout the winter, which disrupted the function of the visitor center and caused Kennecott to close it. Hmm. This is something that we had anticipated. We knew the slide was imminent. We had relocated machinery. We had rerouted roads. We had rerouted utilities. We had rerouted buildings. How do you reroute buildings? Oh, well. Anyway, Kennecott spokesman Kyle Bennett 
Kennecott is a very major employer for this region and very important to the economy and livelihood of a lot of people. Bingham Canyon, what started as movement, okay, there's a reiteration there. Heimbaugh, Kennecott's general manager of operation readiness, said the size and depth of the slide that occurred Wednesday night is still unknown. There's the slide. Okay. After effectively preparing for the slide and preventing any injury, teams are beginning to assess its impact before they can determine when workers will return. My primary goal now is to determine how we can safely, safely resume operations and provide not only the jobs for the people but money to the state of Utah and economy, he said. We've got to do that safely, and that's probably the number one thing that would slow anything down. We will not take a risk. Well, there's no word on, okay, we we will not take a risk. This is what he said on Wednesday. While there's no word on when the mine will start producing again, it will be days or weeks before facilities that process the, uh, the ore will run out of materials, Heimbaugh said. So the copper ore will not run out for days or weeks. The slide occurred around 9.30 p.m. in the northeast section of the mine, Kennecott spokesman Kyle Bennett said. No employees were injured, thankfully, but roads, buildings, and vehicles inside the pit have been damaged. Kennecott is the second largest copper producer in the U.S., supplying about a quarter of the country's copper. Substantial. According to the company's website, Bingham Canyon Mine is the largest man-made excavation on Earth largest man-made excavation on earth which is why it's long been an enormous attraction for people to go view I, I i'm not sure but i think that is probably the visitor center there because i know that one could overlook the mine from the visitor center The copper mining company was aware of the impending slide and had warned residents near the mine wednesday residents as I said, there's houses in the region, had warned residents near the mine Wednesday that a slide was possible any day. Kennecott engineers had been detecting ground movement as far back as February, or, going back to the earlier article, way earlier than February, right? Uh, at the time, the movement amounted to just fractions of an inch, but it was enough for the company to close and relocate the mine's visitor center. Okay, so you can go on and read... There's quite a bit more here. Movement is constant in the mining business, Heimbaugh said. And 900 sets of eyes working in the mine are constantly watching for activity. The newest system, which uses radar to take 385,000 pictures of the mine wall every four minutes, first detected the movement and is being used to determine when human crews can enter the mine and evaluate the damage in person. So, it's a very interesting article. Here's just somebody from Kaysville making a comment. JWB, maybe the land movements of the past 110 years have impacted on their visitor center having structural problems, and it's not just the landslide. There is another article. Anyway, have a look. Good photo coverage, Raphael. Now I want to, um, this is from www.heavyequipmentforums.com. Some of you guys might like this website. It's interesting. Heavyequipmentforums.com. Kind of interesting. I think that's why I put this up. It's an interesting website. Here are some links provided on here on this blog. No injuries heard. Maybe 20 trucks buried and a couple of loaders? Question mark. And this link to KSL, which is uh, the major radio and television provider in the area. So I'm not going to go there, but you can come to the link. <clears throat> Other stuff may be buried totally out of sight, says Nige. Okay, so more comments here. Interesting to come to. One more place to go. Well, this is in sort of direct contradiction, it could appear to be a contradiction, to what was earlier said. 
but or maybe not. There's another good photo. This is from www.sltrib.com, saltlaketribune.com. That's just a really interesting vantage point. This, again, these are the Winter Mountains to the west of Salt Lake by Bob Mims and Stephen Overbeck. Published yesterday, company has enough ore to refine for right now. We'll decide when it's safe to work in the pit later. Sounds a bit cavalier, but visitor center will remain closed. So you can come here too. There are three photos. At 11 a.m. on Wednesday, they'd moved everyone out, including those who were working in the bottom of the mine. All the employees, thankfully, are safe and accounted for. But now, um, let's come over here. Well, I guess we can now add landslides to the long list of hazards created by that mine, said Brian Munch, president of Utah Physicians for a Healthy Environment. And I'm sure the dust from the slide will at least add another temporary pollution burden on our community. Utah Physicians for a Healthy Environment was one of several environmental groups which filed suit against Kennecott in late 2011 for violating the Clean Air Act for nearly five years. This past winter, inversion made Salt Lake extremely unhealthy in terms of very bad air quality. That lawsuit still underway noted that Kennecott is one of Utah's largest, biggest sources of particle pollution. Kennecott is one of Utah's biggest sources of particle pollution partly from dust kicked up as crews dig and haul ore. But Bennett said the earth movement from the slide was contained to the mine and that minimal dust resulted from the slide. Well, I wondered why the skies were so coppery brown the last two days. Hmm. Okay. All right. Well, this is two wolves out. And come over and look at this fun website. Let's think about this. I will keep a weather eye and a couple of wolf eyes on it. And um just want to add this to the list of multinational anomalies associated with earth movement and slides of various sorts. Two wolves out. Have a blessed weekend. Awoo.